kidding mate welcome to easy on with me judy ever since i released my first two videos covering well sectors one and sectors two the perfect layout for both of them it's been heavily requested i put together the exact same video for sector number three and i've been tweaking the layouts i've been playing with ideas and today is finally the day that i'm going to show you guys the way i put together the third sector the third sector which becomes the new breadbasket of the ship which means we're going to free up a bunch of area in sector two and also sector one that we're going to have to put to a better use so it's a a little bit of a longer video because we're actually redesigning well we're building a new sector and redesigning two other sectors at the same time i really think it's very important that we should look at where we came from before we look at how we're going to get there but with all that said first thing i'd really like to do is i'd just like to borrow like i'd like to borrow like just like to get that out of the way early in the video if you're not happy with the video you're not happy with my layout i'll remind you later on by all means you can have your like back but for the moment can i just borrow it before we go look at sectors one and sectors two <laughs> All right, right here we have our my first sector. My first sector I put together very, very early game because I'm early, early in the game. Every single second, every single resource really, really matters. So this was designed to be the optimum layout, the, the perfect layout to get you up and started. And I will mention there is a dedicated video for sector one. I'll link it up the top right hand corner. Also be down in the pinned comment below. If you need to restart, if you want to restart and you want to have a little bit of an easier time setting up and laying out your first sector. From there, we opened up the second sector. The second sector was the industrial heart of our ship. This is where we processed our steel. We also did carbon and silicon. Also, plenty, plenty of storage and a whole bunch of housing to store. Eh, about 260-ish people or so. Also, this is where we um, put in a second dock, also a second EVA, so we can make sure we can stay on top of both hull repairs, along with bringing in the raw materials directly to this sector to then process them into finalized materials to then, you know, continue with um, building and rebuilding uh, the Tycoon. But, like I said, I will mention... In the pinned comment be down below, you will also find the, the link to the video on the second sector. But we want to talk about the third sector. Now, third sector is going to require a couple of things. One of the things that's going to require is research, a lot of research. We need to finish off tier two research and unlock tier three research before we can even get to building the third sector. With chapter two and tier three research unlocked and your hunt for the protagonist uh, started, I really recommend you jump into the tech tree and the very first thing you grab is the DLS center. There is gonna be a couple of other researches you might need to get first just to keep you alive, but the DLS center is gonna be super important for your expansion into a third sector. It's gonna give you uh, a number of advantages we're gonna get to shortly. The next one you're gonna want is gonna be the fusion station. That's obviously gonna convert ice into water, which means you're gonna have to start mining ice and also bring it back to the ship. The next Next thing you need is the crop farm. The crop farm is going to be very, very important for actually feeding the amount of people that you've found so far and the amount of people that you're going to find during this chapter. No spoilers, but you're going to find some people. More cryopods. Next thing you're going to need is the waste treatment center. The waste treatment center is not super important, but you're going to want to pick it up sooner or later. Really recommend you pick it up sooner rather than later. With those researches covered, we need to talk about the third sector. Now, the third sector, I've unlocked the third sector and uh, what you see here most is temporary the only thing permanent is the housing and also the infirmary throw everything else down wherever you need put in some extra insect farms if you need to to make sure you stay over 100 percent of your food production and that's pretty much it to get you up and running now well the oh actually the only other thing the only other permanent thing is that road that road that goes from the top door to the top door that's also permanent all right let's start with roads first because that seems like a great spot to start we're going to bring our road out to one tile past this infirmary then up a tile then all the way to the far end next we're going to jump into our brand new buildings we're going to grab the dls center dls center will let you unlock our policies they're sector policies not shipwide policies i'm going to put this up against the wall right here we're going to bring down a road from there and then in one tile and then down to the end End. and whilst we get the roads built we're going to talk about policies policies there are many many policies in here the first thing the dls center actually gave you which i should probably mention is plus one policy from propaganda it means that you get to tell the people they're happy and therefore they're going to be happy so this is how things are going to work from now on at the same time you're probably going to have a worker problem workers are always going to be a problem so you can look at this very first policy here which is intense works work hours it does mean that buildings are buildings operations require 25 percent fewer workers and as and it's going to cost you one stability but then you just got one stability 
profitability by building the building so it breaks even. Recommend you do that. Now, when it comes to setting these policies, it means for the next 10 cycles, I can't ch add another policy or change this policy. That's perfectly fine by me because for the next 10 cycles, we're probably going to be doing a whole lot of building. Next thing we're going to need to get into this sector is a factory. It is going to be the fusion station. The fusion station we're going to put behind the DLS center facing up because that way it's going to connect to that one little bit of road right there. And that'll give us access to start processing ice. We don't have ice here yet because there's two other things I want to throw in. We have room in here for a memorial. We're going to put a memorial of, sorry, uh, the genetic. Yeah, the genetic. The genetic is for the food specialization, which is what this sector is going to be. This is going to be our new bread basket. So we're going to drop this right here. The next thing we're going to do, and we're going to fit that, well, we're going to drop that right there because it fits nicely. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a mess hall. We're going to put a mess hall right beside our uh, memorial, which means I can remove uh, this mess hall. Uh, we'll just power you down. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we want to put in some permanent storage. This is all temporary. I want to put in something a little bit more permanent. So we're going to go in to maintenance, uh, storage, stockpiles. We're going to go one, miss the tile, one, and then we're going to have two behind them facing in towards the middle because we skip that tile. So we can put in a road right here. We're going to set you up to be food. We're going to set you up to be ice. The ones behind them, we can set to be food and ice as well. Now, obviously I need to get ice in here so we can start uh, filling up the uh, stockpile for the fusion station to start actually making some water, which means we're going to have to come into the sector policies. We're going to have to say ice max uh, sector two. Hopefully I have some ice, zero out of zero. I don't, but that's all right. We're in dev mode. That's why we have it instant build on and I can click this and then we have plenty of ice to get things started. So. Our fusion station. Our fusion station is going to convert 15 ice into 40 water per cycle, which is very, very handy. Very, very, very handy. But mm, we're going to need probably more water than that considering the amount of farms we're going to build, but we'll get to that in a minute. One thing you do need to know is it's going to add water down here to this tank, and this tank is this sector. So if you want to have farms in a different sector, they're going to need their own fusion station with their own sort of source of ice and so on and so forth. All right, with that done, uh, we're going to come into population and we're going to go housing. I want to put a house down here on the corner because on the corner is always where you have the best traffic noise. So we're going to put some poor houses down there or some poor people down there. On top of that, we're going to put down houses all the way down this row. Uh, one, because they fit nicely. Two, because it means in this particular sector, sector number three, I can now hit house 416 people, which is good because sector one has been defrosting people for a while. So we're going to transfer only non-workers from sector one to sector three. And I want to pull out 243, it seems. 243 non-workers from there to there. Move them across. On top of that, I have, uh, what's that? 30 workers. Uh, only workers, sector one to sector, sector three. 30, uh, start migration. Yeah, so we're going to move 30 workers over to here as well. As you can see, I'm only short by three, and technically I should turn off that food farm, which means that I should be okay, right? I need 53 workers, and I have 50. So close. All right, with that done, uh, we, we've done most of the outlines. We need to actually start putting in some food. So food-wise, we're going to put in a crop farm. Now, crop farms are unique and special. It's probably the best way of putting it. Uh, and we're going to need to set them up with their fields. So the crop farm itself, when we put it down, actually does nothing. Okay, doesn't do anything, doesn't produce any food. When we attach fields to it, each field uses 1.5 water and will convert into 1 food, uh, 1.2 food per cycle and half, automatically gets harvested every 10 cycles. So this is the point where I need to put in the warning that during this process, as you build out your farms, which we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as you build out your farms, um, it's gonna be 10 cycles before any food comes out of them. So you need to account for that because it's gonna be 10 cycles before you see the 99 plus food that comes out of here. Whereas these are doing one food every one cycle. So if we look at my food uh, overlay right now, I have 167%, which means I should be able to go through the map and just delete lots and lots of farms, which we are going to do. But I also need to have some sort of leeway time or enough food in storage that I can do that. Uh, so I'm gonna remove these two mainly because I lack workers in this particular sector. Uh, can I also remove you? And can I remove that road? And can I remove you and you because you're doing nothing? You sub microchips will hold on to you for a second longer. So I now have the 30 workers have arrived and we're up to optimal working conditions. Excellent. 
Uh, okay, so we're good in here. We have some bare basics. Also means that, like I said, yes, that went down 155. So at 155% food, means I'm going to come to sector one, and I am going to remove enough farms that we get down to around about 100%. Come on, delete properly, please. You and you. 113%. I'll take that. Uh, also means now in sector number one, I now have 60 free people. Yeah, 60. So sector one to sector three, we want to go only workers. Can I mouse 60 people? They're going to take two sectors to get there with that, well, two sectors, two turns or two cycles to get there, but that's perfectly fine. In the meantime, the DLS center has had their 10 turn wait to activate this protocol. We're now going to activate Waste Recycling Protocol. We don't need this just yet, but if we look at our happiness, I have a plus two, mainly because I built this. If you don't have that, you still have a plus one, and I'm going to remove the plus one by activating the Waste Recycling Protocol. Waste Recycling Protocol is going to be important, not so much now, but in a little while when we explain what we can do with sector number one, because it's no longer doing food. All right, with that out of the way, I want to build in more storage. Uh, I have two spare storage sl slots underneath this sign that have no real use. Does that line up? I hope that's lined up. It's so hard to pick the tiles underneath the, the, the sign. All right, uh, we're also going to put a storage here with a one tile gap, storage here, and then a storage there facing that way. The other thing I want to do is I want to put another workshop here facing in towards that one tile gap and building the road. Now, with those done, it means I'm going to set you to steel. I'm going to set you to waste because now we have waste i'm going to set you to microchips i'm going to unselect you unselect you uh these two you can set for food or ice depending on whatever you have the most storage of for the moment i'm just gonna go with ice because i don't want to micromanage adding ice because i didn't set up mining because it's a temporary map yeah all right with that done i can get rid of this little guy i can also get rid of our workshop cleared off the whole top wall and we can get rid of you basically as soon as you're empty We'll pretend you're empty. All right. With that done, we have now transitioned, you know, cleaned up the top wall, also cleaned up a whole bunch of space here, which means back into food, I want to put another crop farm. Uh, we're going to put a second crop farm right there. And same story, nine fields. One, two, three, four. Do you want to mention with the crop farms? Um, each field itself requires another 16 alloy, which you're going to have to bring in and get delivered to the front only to the front the fields themselves don't need road access on top of that they're going to need three power and actually four people but because we've put in the policy where we need 25 percent less people we only need three uh but if we look at the power up here and the people up here for the crop farm the power updates but the people don't but if i look at my workers down here i need 111 uh i now need 114 i now need 117 so the workers numbers definitely exist. The power number definitely exists. It just doesn't update. Don't ask why. All right. Uh, we also now have a specialization of food tier one, which means food buildings per, uh, require 15% or 10% less water and buildings produce 30% uh, more waste. Now that is both a blessing and a curse. Okay. It's a blessing that in theory, these guys use 10% less water. The catch is that part doesn't work. Uh, and they produce 30% more waste, which is uh, both a blessing and a curse. The 30% more waste is actually going to be very handy. We're going to put, do something with the waste as for, um, and as for the water saving, as I said, it doesn't actually exist. So with each farm being able to produce uh, or consume 1.5 water each, it means after two lots of fields being 19 in total, we should be consuming 27 water. In the case of this building, it should be making 40. So we should be fine. At the same time, our food production is at 166%. And let's go to sector one and let's remove these guys so they don't ruin our numbers. Repair, demolish. You know what? What happens if I cut off your road? Well, you're still getting repaired somehow. Not sure how. Cool. Demolish. All right. Food. Uh, we're 125%. Okay. So I have enough food to feed everybody just, just a little bit spare. A little bit spare. I, I can feed about 1,100, 1,200 people. Only using 27 water. Now, math, math, math says that I can put in another crop farm and I can put from that crop farm, I can put in one, well, I have 18 farms. So that's 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I can put in 23 farms 
and we can produce enough water to feed this amount of fields which currently means my I'm up to 160% food which means I can feed 12, 13, 1400 people 1300? 1300, 1300 and prior that I could feed about a thousand people total but you can get a couple of upgrades to fix this to add in the extra farms to do that you need to go on the technology tree we need the fusion station to have this upgrade okay production speed increased by 10 percent if we get that upgrade we can fully build out the second farm but i do need to mention uh that requires all the technology in tier 3 be done which means we need to fill in finish out the legislative legislative strengthening center plus we need to f do the cell housing plus we need to do the mushroom wall which i actually recommend you getting get, get anyway uh plus for doing this particular chapter of the game you're going to need a colonist training center anyway and you also need the fire station so you need to spend about 250 odd research here still to get this well to be able to look at doing this one upgrade when you look at doing that one upgrade, you're going to see that it needs the Argumented Building Protocols Workshop upgrade required, which means we're going to go into Workshop, which means we need this one, which is going to let the next repair buildings 25% faster, which needs this one, which means Workshop's now automatically repair buildings. You're probably going to want this one anyway. You're probably going to want this one anyway. So you need to get those done before you do this. After you do that, we're going to produce uh, 15 ice into 40 water rather than every cycle it's every 0.9 of a cycle with that upgrade done you can then finish building these farms all the way out and then have enough food for a lot of people an awful lot of people for right now all right with that sort of ironed out for this sector the only other thing i want to do is in 0.7 a cycle i'd like to en enact intense propaganda to get an extra plus one happiness we don't really need the plus one happiness but i'll take a plus one happiness because we can get a plus one happiness all right which brings us on to well there, there we go it just finished uh plus one cool all right the only other thing i do want to actually mention with this sector is maintenance batteries are one two three four five six six batteries across the bottom wall is generally enough to do just to, well generally enough so we got enough power we can fly around the ship without too much problem it gets you about three three ish um cycles worth of battery power three four i can't remember uh and we have reserved area on the top of the wall for different things also the area on the bottom wall can be reserved for cell housing because this is also going to end up being the spot where we dump all the people that we don't need so anytime we come in here and have non-workers and i need somewhere to mail them off because this sector can only hold 500 people we can ship them to here also means in here we can put in with great ease because we have this whole space up here doing nothing we can put in a second mess hall because our first mess hall only feeds 500 people yep we could put in a second mess hall and feed a thousand people and shove more sardines into this particular part of the tin can. All right, on to sector two, because I said when we're doing sector three, we're going to have to, we want to do some improvements to sector two at the same time. At the same time, I've cleared up a whole lot of space in sector one that I means I want to rebuild things in sector one and, and, and neat them up and optimize sector one. So, um, with at least sector three um, shown off to you guys, uh, that was the original promise. Um, remember the like I asked whether I could borrow can I keep it? Can I keep it? Because like well, we've got the sector up and running. We've got plenty of food. Everything's fine. I should, probably should be mining ice, but we'll, we'll ignore that for this demonstration video purpose. The only thing I haven't dealt with is the waste because that goes to sector one, which we haven't done yet. So I'm going to invite you to, you know, if I didn't get the like earlier, can I, can I have it now? And we'll go talk about sector two and then we'll get on to sector one. All right. Sector one. Sector one, we uh, want to do a couple of things. First off, um, as you can see, I have one polymer plant. I also have two docking bays because this is where we're bringing in our resources. So we don't have to bring into a different sector than transport across, which is going to bring in the raw resources right here for smelting. And uh, we have the second docking bay to add potentially more, three more ships to do the exact same to bring in lots of resources for lots of smelting. But uh, there are definitely improvements we can make. The first improvement is throwing a road in here and up to here and down here. And then we're going to go into stability and I'm going to throw in a DLS center. With that whacked in, the very first policy I want to do in this particular sector is intense work hours. Why? Because we use a crap ton of people in the industrial sector, a lot. So we're going to throw that one in straight away. Uh, as we already covered, it costs us nothing because we're getting plus one from the propaganda to have minus one from working hours. But we now have 50 workers free. On top of that, I want to rearrange stuff right here. So we're going to remove uh, you and you. 
And in that area, we would put in factories. Uh, we already have a polymer plant, but we're now gonna put in one, two polymer plants with an itty bitty road right there, which means I can get rid of this polymer plant, which is gonna free up a little bit of space down in this bottom corner. Now, before I go too much further, I do need to mention power. Power has got, um, power usage has got very high. We only have 32 for power available. So you are going to, at this stage of the game, probably have to look at upgrading your solar panels. I have uh, everything through to medium solar panel five on the first set and up to four on the second set. You're gonna need that extra solar panel part five on the second set to get an extra 45 power to keep the lights on. So we're gonna do that upgrade straight away and then come back in here. I'm gonna start putting things to good use. Okay, so with this small upgrade done, the only other thing we wanna do in this sector is, well, obviously not have that. And in theory, I'd want ice in here so we can ship out the ice. Uh, we also don't need you, don't need you. Uh, well, I don't need you storing iron. I don't need you storing iron. And I don't need you storing iron, 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 processed iron, 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 unprocessed iron. All right. The other two things I want to do in this particular sector is we currently have an EVA airlock in here. We put in an EVA airlock in both the first sector and the second sector to make sure we could repair the hull fast enough. We don't want to have that in this sector anymore. So we're going to rip that out. Now, that leaves us a giant chunk of space, which we could put in another docking bay. I really like the idea of another docking bay. By the same token, we don't need this road down here anymore. We needed it originally because the houses were three by three. So we need a road on either side for access. We don't need it anymore, which means if you wanted, you could put your docking bay over one tile, which means you could then undock your ships and move this docking bay over one tile, which means you could move this docking bay over one tile and you could have a total of three docking bays. Three docking bays hard up against one another or you could just put a docking bay on this side and have the extra tile on this side used for future programs, whatever it happens to be. As for this side, I do want to mention, it's been told to me many, many times in the comments, I'm yet to confirm it. I will mention that, I'm yet to confirm it. But um, supposedly there's wall, there's, there's, there's roadways inside the walls. So if a truck comes into the bottom doorway, it can traverse out the top doorway. Like I said, I haven't confirmed it, but that's what I've been told. So in theory, we'll, we'll go with the comment section for a change. And that means I could quite happily remove these few tiles and put in my other docking bay right here. Having another docking bay means I can have nine ships out collecting resources at all times and bring back a lot of resources constantly to keep the factories running. Keeping the factory running is very, very high priority, especially when you get to a new sector. You want to get everything processed sort of as fast as you possibly can. It does mean that I have this big open wide space here, which I could put in more factories. Realistically, we don't need that many more factories. The one thing we probably could do with is a little bit more power in the way of former battery power. So we're going to go with one, whoop, one, two, three, four, five, six and then I can throw a road down there and power all those guys up. We can't really do anything with a little bit of area that's left. I don't even think I can fit in a polymer plant. I can put in storage and we can have some storage closer to the docks. Doesn't really hurt to have storage close to the docks. This is sort of what this area is for so I can turn on different amounts of storage. But well, we don't need you storing that. So I can store up material and then when we've got chance process it as fast as possible we can see these guys are full of polymer if i was to turn that on we could get rid of the carbon process it in the polymer and then store polymer rather than storing carbon that hasn't been processed yet i like having some spare storage all right but that finishes off pretty much sector two the important thing was to get uh that very first bonus from the working hours we do want waste recycling so i do need to have a storage up here set up for waste recycling but i can't turn it on until we actually have the policy in place which is still oh also i do want to mention that um when you feed the people things other than bugs um they're very very happy with you and they now trust you 10 percent more very handy. Uh, we need to put in that policy first, which is going to be another four cycles, which brings us on to sector one. Sector one, I want to do a lot of things. Mainly this sector is being used currently for defrosting peepsicles, and we want to keep it in doing that. We also removed an EVA airlock, which I need to replace. So first thing I want to do is I want to put a DLS center in here, which means we can now enact a policy. The per first policy I want to enact on this particular center, uh, sector is not the working hours one. It's going to be the waste recycling. We're going to need that one first. 
Okay, with that done, we're going to go into population. We're going to get another Peepsicle Defroster, and we're going to put that right beside the DLS Center. Great, that's those two things done. The next thing I want to do is I want to remove these batteries so I have room to move. I also want to remove this particular road and move it up a tile. It's going to be fairly important in one second. All right, next thing I need to talk about is hull repairs. So at the moment, I'm going to pause the game so we can't change the numbers on me. Actually, we'll let that finish that cycle. Great. All right. So we have hull repair. We're trying our very, very hardest to re repair the hull currently with one airlock. We can see the balance is minus 16 per cycle. We're doing we're doing 64 damage. That is 40 from running the vol engine twice, 24 from three open sectors. And uh, we're repairing the hull at 43 with a 90% efficiency, i.e. the hull is very damaged. Therefore, the efficiency goes up. Therefore, it's easier to repair the hull because we can find lots of spots that are damaged. On top of that, uh, we get plus five from optimal working conditions. So I have more workers than I have jobs. Therefore, it's easy to do. Therefore, I have well, spare labor. Therefore, I get a plus five bonus. But uh, over here, we can see we're spending 3.6 steel for 48 hull points. What I want to do is when I go to space and I want to put my EVA airlock I had in the other sector, I want to put it here. Now, when we do that, we're going to unlock space specialization rank one, which if I look at my policies means docking bays load and unload resources 30% faster. Sector two would love to have that. They can't because they need five space buildings to get that. And sector two has no hope of fitting five space buildings. Not today. Also, the hull repair speed is 10% more efficient. 10% more efficient sounds very good. We were at 90% efficiency. Remember, 10, 90% plus 10% would be 100%. It's not. What we have is a plus 8.6, which is 10% of the 86 we were doing above that, uh, for space specialization tier one. But the more important number is my 3.6 steel is now turning into 58.3 hull points. Okay. So if I remove this building again, just so we lose that bonus, we're back to 48. So it means my steel my steel is now being stretched 10% more. I'm getting 10% extra hit points out of the same amount of steel. That's the really, really big bonus for this sector. Because we now have five space buildings, one being the EVA, well, two being the EVA airport, uh, the EVA airlocks, uh, one being the probe launcher has a building specialization space. Also, we have the docking bay, which just has our two, two mining ships, plus our spaceship, our science ship, which means it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't do anything. We don't have to worry about resources coming in and out of this this air of this this docking bay. It just sends ships in and out and repairs them occasionally and breaks down, which also has a space specialization. We also have the tech lab, which has a space specialization. Because we have uh, five buildings, we get that ten percent bonus, which means um we can get ten percent extra. Uh, our, our steel spreads or spends spreads spreads ten percent further. All right, one thing we have to do because we have the trash, uh, the trash waste recycling turned on means I need to set up a storage for waste, which means our tech lab, which was the only thing in this sector that actually produced a waste, gets to run full time because now we can take the waste and put it into storage rather than it just sitting there. Yeah, that's going to be very, very important. Also is going to sector number two and turning on waste recycling in there as well. All right. With that done, I want to fill in the rest of this, this, this sector. So we're going to put in another EVA airlock. Now, this EVA airlock, I'm actually going to turn off. I don't need it running. We don't need it to fully repair the hull. We can turn it on if, if somebody slips over on a, on, a, on a piece of scrap metal in one of these EVA airlocks and the hull gets a little bit too damaged or we fly the ship around. We need to boost the hit points up. We, we fire up the engine. We're short on steel for a little while. Anything like that, having a third one means I can boost the repair speed should I need to. Um, actually, let's just turn you on for a minute and we can see we can now do 140. Yeah, we can repair the hull much faster with a third one. So we have a third one as a backup, okay? At the same time, I have a little bit of space here in the middle. Now that little bit of space here in the middle, I wanna do a couple of things with. Uh, what I actually wanna do is I wanna move the stockpile for the microchips back on top. Also the same with the food storage. That means I'd have to put down the storage and then, you know, fill them up and move the materials and we're in a dev mode. We can just build them and 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 put them here and rehook up the road instantly and you know, we move them back a tile. That's really all that matters. All right, uh, we want you to do food and we want you to do microchips. Okay, with those upgrades done, it means I have a very large area right here in the middle. In that very large area, I'm going to put in a waste treatment center. We're going to put in one 
two and pause the game because I've put in a third and I only have nine power left. I'm going to turn that one off. I can't run three currently. I don't have enough waste to run three of them. But what I do have is uh, sector one can have lots of waste. Uh, sector two can have waste and sector three already has waste. And we see we have 81 in sector number three. We're going to keep a little bit in sector no number three, not a lot. And we also need to turn one of these guys on for waste as well so we can pull the waste out of the different factories and put them in there so we can ship it over here what the waste management center does and this is where the real power of this upgrade comes in is it can convert 50 waste into 50 alloys or 50 waste into 20 polymer or 50 waste in one electronic circuit now up until this point of the game you probably found it's a little bit hard to get electronic circuits i would definitely agree with you so you can start making them from trash super super handy the other thing you can do is you can just make alloys now if we do a, some simple maths and we say 50 alloy uh, 50 waste in a 50 alloy every 10 cycles that means five waste into five alloy every one cycle with two of these running it means i'm making five alloy ten alloy and i'm spending uh six alloy on repairs so i'm making ten from trash and i'm spending six of it on repairs which means i'm currently in a net positive of plus four alloy every single cycle which means i have become self-sufficient at least on steel. I also have to have water now. That's that's a separate thing. I need to make sure I have ice to make sure we have water to make sure this keeps running, which it's keep running just a bit. It's almost empty. So obviously I probably got one farm too many. Let's remove one field. Cool. All right, remove one field. That'll solve that problem. Um, Yes, we, we, we need to have ice now, but at least our, our alloy, our steel problem has been taken care of. It also means that if we end up with lots of waste or I have lots of iron and therefore I can just smelt the iron myself, I can swap these guys over and make microchips. Making microchips is very, very handy. The other thing that's very, very important is this particular building. Um, when you change the recipe, it doesn't reset. You don't lose any progress. It just changes straight from one to the other. So you can leave it on microchips and just swap it over, you know, on those very rare occasions you actually need alloy, or you can leave it on alloy and swap it over microchips on those very rare occasions you want microchips. Personally, I want a lot of microchips, so mine are set to microchips most of the time. Even with just one of these on each, it still means, where are we? Um, I'm spending six, yeah. I'm so up, it's 2.6. So I'm actually spending, uh, 2.6 doubled yeah i'm actually spending what 5.2 5.2 steel and i'm making five we can see how close we are to becoming just 100 self-sufficient with just one of these guys running now as for waste waste is currently coming from my farms it's also coming from the fusion station it's also coming from all the different manufacturing and smelting we have here so that is the two steel plants plus the electronics factory plus the two polymer plants and it's also coming from our tech lab but there is a couple of other things i do want to mention when it comes to waste it is under the crops farm there is right here at the end it is going to take you a little while to get to is the knee high corps protocol which means that the crop farms will produce 30 percent more waste don't forget we already have the policy uh, in sector number three where they already produce 30 percent more waste so it's waste multiplied by waste equals waste yeah uh, sector two needed intense so cool down and you need waste recycling you can have you're really happy in this sector right plus three yeah you're really happy in this sector uh we're gonna go with saving some workers cool all right uh which yes we do lose five from the sector uh when it comes to hull repair for the working hours policy set to intense it's net positive no matter what all right uh, what was i saying oh, oh uh new policy new policy sector two uh, propaganda Yep, cool, make them happy too. Um, okay, so waste on waste on waste. On top of that, there is under the crew quarters, there is the knee high quarter protocol, which means housing, same story. Uh, we're gonna get one waste per 20 inhabitants over 15 cycles, which means for 400 people, you would get 20 waste, 20 waste every 15 cycles, which equals about one waste per, or one and a half, one, one a bit waste per 400 people um as we can see this sector's got 400 sector one's got 400 sector two's got 300 we're gonna have about five waste right there which is enough to make five steel just from the people on top of that uh back in the research tree there is also under cell housing it has its own nahe cell protocol 
I think this is like 15 waste per 20 people over five cycles or something. It's a lot more waste, a lot more waste for the cell housing. Cell housing doesn't have any housing bonuses, but you know, something else to keep in, keep in mind if you want to crack up the waste numbers. Oh, wrong button. Uh, also, when it comes to waste, and this is why we want to get the research done, we've left the top wall open for uh, food uh, mushroom walls. So we can put in three mushroom walls across this top wall with great ease. Working hours too high. Let's just turn you and you and you and you. Cool, that'll do me. Uh, turn a few of those guys off. Uh, this will turn six waste into nine food every three cycles, which again is a massive amount of bonus. It's also why in sector three, we want to keep 10 waste in stock. Just so when we make waste here, if we've resorted to mushroom walls to sort of supplement our food, we can use some of the local waste to come in here and turn into, well, well, more food, more food. Uh, the people are not particularly happy about eating their trash, but they will accept it. But we have um, room for three up here, plus another three over here for more of them. And we also, like I said, have this wall down here available for the cell housing because it goes up against the side of the hull. We obviously have a problem with water because I turn off the wrong buildings. Let's go with, uh, sure. Uh, ice is uh, annoying, annoying. I really do recommend that you get that fusion high pressure cutters upgrade as soon as possible if you really want to go into more than two dedicated farms. That third one is very temperamental and for whatever reason, this this water bonus doesn't seem to apply. But with all that said, this is definitely where I need to end this video. I've spent most of your power. I've shown you how to build out tier, well, build out the third sector upgrade the se second sector make sure that it has waste being exported which means all these buildings have less downtime because they don't have to go through that waste cycle it just gets put in a storage box and then from the storage box gets shipped over here i guess turned to free alloys or free microchips at the same time i've also shown you guys how to improve your your steel to hull ratio so you're getting more hull for the same amount of steel which i think is very very beneficial also a whole lot of happiness like a whole lot of happiness across all the sectors they're all uh happy plus two happy plus one uh happy plus two. Oh, oh, and don't forget we're now uh, i need 150 workers plus 150 workers plus 140 workers i need 350 workers to feed a thousand plus and also run well all the spaceships all the mining ships all the um all the factories, everything, everything. We have workers to spare, and I still know for this particular sector, I need to defrost a lot of people. Anyway, with all that said, I do need to leave this video here. By all means, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because there will be a follow-up video for the fourth sector. Oh, I should mention probably very quickly, because somebody's gonna put it out in the comments section. Batteries, just a few, just a few down here, just a few, just enough to keep the lights on. You can also shift all these over by one tile if you want to, to get in extra tile to put in more batteries down here. It's, it's entirely up to you. It takes a little while to do, but uh, excellent's nice. Uh, you get 100% refund for everything. But like I said, I need to end this video here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the very next video. All right, bye.